Okay, I'm one of the monks. I also write the music for Halo and uh, work on the sound design. I'm Marty O'Donnell, and this is my little friend. All right. Bigger than you think, O'Donnell. Uh, Joseph State and I do all the cinematics and otherwise pester Marty. Yeah, all the time. But we have to work together as a team because what is visuals without audio? That's true. Good point. And uh, this is an excellent example of just that, right, this opening, that relationship, This Marty. opening somewhat cutscene, but you still have control of the camera, but action is still happening on the screen. Hey, this actually happens a lot in the first level, which is what we're seeing now. The player is actually taking camera control away from me, right. which makes me nervous. But at the right. same time, uh, it sets up really cool cinematic moments that we've just essentially uh, you know, set up different things that are going to happen in the environment, be they explosions that trigger when you run by them, or guys that run up to you and have something important to say, little in-level cinematic and moments Every piece of shrapnel cool. has its own metallic hit sound when it hits, and you know where it's hitting because you have surround sound on, everybody, right? Don't badger them, Marty. Oh, if they well, have sorry. the system, they'll use it. It's a good system. But really, this whole first part of the game, when you're on your ship, the Pillar of Autumn, uh, this big, massive, kilometer-long uh, cruiser. You are essentially being boarded by the aliens, and we really wanted to give the player in real time that feeling of panic, terror, as the aliens tear through your ship. And, and Mendoza. Mendoza, actually, uh, the Marines each have unique personalities and, and names. And look at that throw. That's a great grenade throw. Great moment. So every time you meet a new Marine, he's going to well, maybe have something interesting to say, but he's going to have a unique voice, and that voice will stay with him throughout his throughout his lifetime. Which is brief. <laughs> if you're trying to protect them. Oh. oh. And this is a part of an insertion cinematic, what we call the cinematic moments at the beginning of a level, where we introduce the level to the player, show them the environment they're going to fight in, maybe show them a preview of the enemies they're going to face, that sort of thing. And hear the ambient background of the, the birds and the wind and the Covenant dropship coming from far away mm -hmm. and the music swelling as you see the sun. And this is actually a pretty challenging course, environment. you're not hearing that at this moment. You're hearing us. Right, sure. But, okay, just pretend. But a pretty challenging environment to actually try to create cinematics for and add sounds to just because it is so so right. big and imposing. And a giant waterfall over to your right, which is echoing off the cliffs. And it really truly is echoing because we have environmental modeling, uh, digital signal processing chip on the Xbox, which we can set to all sorts of environmental models. Like this is a huge room with a really big echo. And this is the Arnold Schwarzenegger shot. I don't know why you refer to that as the Schwarzenegger shot. Don't you when it's movie? clearly a sort of Godard. Godard. Anyways, yeah. that's another insertion cinematic, again, showing the player who they're going to fight, where they're going to fight them. Yep. And if you're quick enough on this level, you can actually steal one of the Banshees, this alien flying vehicle, from uh, the aliens before they're able to get into it. And to show you how big it is, I think if, if you were to get in this Banshee and just fly straight across to the other side, it still takes you like 20 seconds. It's a really big And big every space. one of those little plasma hits, when it hits the wall, has its own little unique burning sound, which Actually, was partially my mouth noise, by the way, for those of you who didn't know that. Uh, that's wow. gross, dude. Yeah, okay. But Mouth I mean, noises are good for games, trust me. <laughs> because you know what, everybody else... something to... else, Hey, too. hey, hey! Edit that out. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so where are we? Look at those... Look at those hooves that these guys have. Those creatures are great. You know, whenever you kill one of those creatures, you should definitely get up close and just look at it for a while, because the... It's un unbelievable what it looks like. Actually, we, we don't really spend a lot of time luxuriating on and sh actually showing you the aliens in the cinematics, right. which, is, which is too bad because every little piece of them has a sound when it clanks, this hunter's armor, his shield, right. for example. Even when he's breathing, he makes sounds, and it, it's tied directly to, to the way he, his idle animations work and then his action animations. My favorite sound I think I've heard that you've created so far, Marty, though, is when you sneak up behind one of these hunters yeah. and you melee attack them in the game, yeah. and then, uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but you just got to listen to the sound they make when they die, when they fall forward and die. Gabonk. It's, it's good stuff. <laughs> think watermelon yeah, wrapped up in go. a big thing of tinfoil. Right, baseball bat. in the ground. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is good here. You get the sniper rifle, you get uh -huh. in close. Hey, uh... Hey, does this Marty, remind you of anything? Does this look familiar, Marty? Oh, oh yeah, but I was on that other end. Oh, wait, if that didn't look familiar, does, does, does this look familiar? No. Oh, Martin! What? Oh. Ooh. Yeah, that should remind you of every single time you ever faced me in multiplayer, muchacho. I know, I know. But that's because I actually spend my time working rather than playing till I get good. Hey, if you listen really close, I think you can hear the ice creaking. Yeah, and the, the snowflakes actually hitting the ice. Uh-huh. 
We're, we're, every detail is in this game. And the, the cool thing about, uh, uh, well, I mean, this is just cool, right? This is totally cool. I'm sort of mesmerized by it. <laughs> Take that, dang! Yeah. And actually, the first and the time ghosts I saw this, yeah, the ghost out, actually coming so out cool. of the thing. That's great. The, the physics are really fun to work with. So when we actually attach sounds and they work with the actual physics of the environment, that means the sounds do things that we weren't even planning on them to do once you start working with them in the environment. So as the hovercraft gets nearer and further away and bounces, the sound actually responds and crash. There you go. The sound mm -hmm. of metal crashing into metal. What you're saying, Marty, is it's all about putting the puzzle pieces into place and then just letting the player go. Letting Jason Jones make it happen. Uh, there you go. He's the man. There you go. See, I know who's the kiss. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and there's the tank that looks broken, but it's not. See, because he starts it up. And, and working on engine sounds for these things is also a blast because the engines... Uh, you, the can, engines you can tell exactly what's coming at you from, from behind. Something's coming at you from behind, you can tell some little creature walking up to you, or some huge tank driving up to you, you don't even have to see it. A lot of the time in Halo, when you're going through these big environments, we are built in moments of transitions. This, though we haven't created the cinematic for it yet, is going to be one of the situations where you come into a new environment that's huge and massive, and you want to show it in third person, and figuring out a way to pull back and say, hey, this is how big, this is how big and cool it is. Kaboom! Oh.